It's the Friday Morning Thumb on the Live 88.5 Morning Startup. And this morning we've got Ottawa filmmaker and movie critic Christopher Redman in the studio. Good morning, Chris. Good morning, everyone. So which way does the thumb go this week? Well, I'm going to give a somewhat qualified thumb up for the film Rosewater. Okay. And right now, if you're a fan of The Daily Show, uh, you've heard about this story for the past two years. Yes. All right? Um, if you're not a fan of The Daily Show, you have no idea what I'm talking about. So let me explain. Uh, um, about in 2009, The Daily Show with Jon Stewart, you know, famous comedy show, um, went to Iran and they were covering some of the protests there. And and what happened was they interviewed this Canadian Iranian journalist who was there and in their kind of smart alecky uh, in a way yeah. they were accusing him of being a spy sort right. of jokingly right it's good piece funny everyone they leave except a couple days later this guy gets arrested thrown in prison in solitary confinement and he's there for about 150 days right all right so he's stuck in this prison well the daily show feels a little guilty about it well, <laughs> obviously right they did do the interview with right him. and and there were other reasons why he was arrested i mean he was filming during the protest and stuff but it's become sort of this mission for john stewart to turn this story into a film oh, cool. and so he's been interviewing the author over the years and in a lot of ways the movie feels like a movie that john stewart needed to make more than a movie that necessarily you know people needed to see oh a guilty conscious kind of movie yeah, there's a bit of atonement there, I think, in yeah. his making it. And that's not a bad thing, necessarily. It's right. just not inherently the most dramatic story. Of course, again, and if you watch The Daily Show, you know that he's you know released relatively unharmed, although he is in solitary confinement, and part of the argument of the film is that that is torture in a lot of ways. You know, he's blindfolded, he's deprived of, of a lot of things. Um, the title, Rosewater, actually comes from one of his guards, who he, he's blindfolded a lot and kind of has this this nice scent of rosewater. Oh, really? Um, but, and, you know, the film is sort of in the middle. It's, it's not the biting satire that maybe you'd expect from Jon Stewart. Right. It's not the kind of thrilling, uh, you know, drama that maybe Argo was, you know, right. another Iranian captive film. Which is kind of what I'm comparing this one to, for whatever reason. Like, yeah. Argo is being the best example of how you do these movies. It is. And and I love Argo, right? And that gets a lot of flack for being very much a Hollywoodization of the story. Yeah. So maybe this film suffers from just kind of trying to step back from that a bit. But what I would actually recommend even more, if you're interested in this kind of story, there's a movie that was released about a month ago called Kill the Messenger. And this followed uh, a journalist who was trying to he exposed a story about how the CIA was flooding the market with drugs from the, uh, South America. Another, right. you know, So if you're interested in these kind of how these journalists get pros- uh, persecuted, I would say that one's even a little more interesting. But Rosewater is is worth your time for sure. Awesome. Okay. Uh, what other movies open up this weekend? Well, one movie I'd love to give more attention to is a small film called Laggies. All right. So this is a comedy by Lynn Shelton, who's part of this movement. Normally, we th- when we think of movements, we think of music, right? You think yeah. of you know Montreal music scene or, or the Seattle music scene. Well, it happens in film as well. And Lynn Shelton's part of what they call mumblecore, this mumblecore movement of films. And it's actually based in sort of Seattle. It's about 20 to 30-somethings who who are just sort of, you know, talking themselves in and out of doing something with their lives, you okay. know? And initially, they were very low budget, and they were kind of had a hard time hearing them talk. Uh, the budgets are a bit better now for these films, right. so that's not really a case, but they're still called Mumblecore, and this one stars Kira Knightley, and she plays it's the sort big of... Star. Yeah, big star. Oh, yeah, big, big stars in it now. Like I said, they've, they've got a lot of attention, and so uh, she plays this sort of perpetually pubescent woman who kind of hasn't grown up. All her friends are getting married and she's sort of on the outside looking in and she's, like I said, in her early 30s but she befriends this teenager and starts kind of retreating back into that life where she's going to sleepovers and going to their prom and right. it's, this, it's this odd kind of friendship that emerges and then there's sort of an inevitable romance that happens with her friend's dad between her and her friend. Um, but, it, but it's a really insightful film and to see these Sounds female- Canadian. <laughs> in, well, Seattle's kind of close, right? So yeah. maybe that makes sense. <laughs> um, but it's really nice to see these female centric films that, you know, aren't just about women pooping in the sink. Right? <laughs> <laughs> from the bridesmaid, bridesmaids reference, if that makes no sense. But we just don't see a lot of these ones that are a unique kind of women's point of view about, you know, what what is really funny from their point of view. And that's like picking apart the moments at weddings where all the other women are fawning, like, oh, look how sweet it is that they're doing this first dance. It's all coordinated and ridiculous. And they kind of cut back to these other women who are like, this is ridiculous. You right. Know? Um, and so it's it's a nice comedy. I think people should really check it out. It almost sounds like um uh, like an HBO sort of series of some sort. So this is... it's. 
it's a film made by women for women kind of thing? Well, I loved it. I'm not a woman. Uh, I would say it's <laughs> it's just <laughs> we're so used to this archetype of the man child, right? And it's, you know, Jason Siegel always plays it or Seth Rogen and yeah, guys yeah, that don't yeah. grow up. It's just flipping that a little bit. And it's a woman doing it and not in a, in a cheesy way like she's still kind of, you know, fall down, go boom kind of, you know, banana humor. Right. But um, just smarter. It's a little more incisive. You know, it's uh, it's really for everyone, but uniquely from a female perspective. Awesome. Okay, two good movies there, Laggies and uh, Rosewater. Also opening up today is Horrible Bosses 2, so I guess you're saying... Uh there's better movies to go see. I would say so. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Use That's, your money wisely. Vote, people. There you go. Ottawa filmmaker and movie critic Christopher Redman in the Friday Morning Thumb this morning. Ottawa Trap.